What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the world according to Briggs and another look at where you could buy a decent house for $200,000 or less. As of June 2020, the median home price in the United States was at $329,000 according to the Federal Reserve. For a lot of Americans, that's a little too steep. Most Americans can afford around 200,000. So what we did for this list was sift through various government and real estate websites looking for places in the United States with a decent livability score that have homes for 200,000 or less. Now keep in mind, you're not going to find beachfront property in Malibu, California for 200,000, but that doesn't mean you can't find a nice place to make a life. I will tell you the median home price is really just a stat. It is normally a little off from what you'll find realistically. So I will give you what we found price-wise, like what you're looking at for a fixer-upper and what you're looking at for a nice home. And it's just kind of what we saw. It's no real stat. Today we're looking at the great state of rocks, dirt, heat, and retirement called Arizona. Let's take a look. Number 10, Corona de Tucson. Corona de Tucson is a census-designated area about 30 minutes south of downtown Tucson. And by the way, when someone says it's about 30, 40 minutes, or even 5 hours away from something, it's safe to assume they mean in a car. I've had more than a few comments and emails asking why I don't mention what mode of transportation I'm talking about. If you're an adult and you need that explained to you, I would advise getting off the internet. It's too hard for you. The livability score here is 78, which is solid. Anything over 65 is not a terrible place to live. And the 7,500 residents in Corona de Tucson will be glad to tell you that. This place is near the foothills of the Santa Rita Mountains and adjacent to the Coronado National Forest, if you like hiking. There's a lot of videos out there of people hiking there. It looks like a nice desert hike. I like trees, but I know there's a whole bunch of people out there that like to hike in the desert. So if that's you, this is a good place for it. The median home price here is $199,400. That's what they say, but a fixer-upper here could be as low as $130,000. A nice home is going to be around $200,000. I saw some nice, decent, livable ones that you might need a little bit of work for about one seventy dollars to one eighty. dollars But if you really want a nice home, you're going to be looking above $250,000 here, all the way up to I've seen $400,000. The only really knock here is they got an F on amenities. It's out in the middle of the desert, kind of far away from Tucson, so there's not a lot going on there as far as stores and things to do other than maybe the foothills there to hike around in. Number nine, Surprise, Arizona. Surprise, Arizona is one of my favorite names for a city. The city was founded in 1938 by Flora Mae Statler, who named it Surprise because, as she put it, she would be surprised if this town ever amounted to much. Surprise, it has. This is not a bad place to live. There's a lot of things to do, a lot of nice houses. Surprise Stadium is where the Kansas City Royals and the Texas Rangers do their spring training every year. They have a nice livability score of 78 and a population of almost 130,000. The median home price here is $197,000 and a fixer-upper, you're looking at around $130,000, $140,000. Realistically, a decent home is going to be about $200,000 on up, and it does go up. The only knock here is their school's got an F. But that's not a big deal because mostly this place is, I wouldn't say mostly, but a good portion of the population here is retired, so they're not worried about where their kids are going to school. Their kids should be grown up and out of the house by now. This is the second fastest growing suburb of the greater Phoenix metro area right after Gilbert. Thousands of retirees moved to this city in the 1990s and early 2000s to live in Sun City Grand. That's an age-restricted resort-like type community. This is not a bad place to live. It's Arizona, so your biggest problem is probably going to be the heat, but a lot of people don't like it. As I've said many times before, I'm not one of the people that like the heat, so I'd never live here. But if you don't mind the heat, this is a good option. Number 8. Casa Adobes. Casa Adobes is a census-designated area in the northern section of the Tucson metro area. If you look at the homes here, you'll see how Arizona this place is. Arizona homes have a distinct architecture, and this place is a great example. I've been here before, and again, with the architecture, they have this really cool mall called Casa Adobes Plaza. It's a normal mall as far as shops go and stuff like this, but what makes it special is how it's built and the architecture. It's a really neat-looking, like, little mall. You get a chance, go by there. Have some lunch. Got a nice place to sit and relax. They got some nice 
fountains. The livability score in Casas Adobes is 71. They've got a population of just under 70,000 residents and the median home value is 175,000. Now, if you're looking for a fixer upper, it's realistically going to cost you somewhere in the neighborhood of $190,000 and the nice homes start at 250 and go up. They have, you know, they go up pretty good. Now they get an F in crime, but it's not terrible. It's not like Detroit or St. Louis terrible. It's just not great. Number seven, Buckeye, Arizona. Buckeye is a small city about 45 minutes west of downtown Phoenix. 10 minutes if you own a helicopter. This is a nice little city surrounded by farmland. They have a Walmart distribution center in town where a lot of the residents work. Just north of town, you have some foothills with hiking trails and camping spots. So it's a decent place to live. You know, it's not the best, but it's not terrible. They have a low cost of living and their only real knock is the schools aren't graded the best. The livability score here is 76. They got a population of around 60,000 residents. Their median home value is $167,000. If you're looking for a fixer upper, you're probably going to be spending only about $115,000, $115,000, $125,000, somewhere in that area. If you want one of the nicer homes, there's a little bit of a jump there. $240,000 will get you a nice home built semi-recently. Buckeye was the fastest growing city in the United States for both 2017 and 2018. Kind of slowed down a little bit. This is a pretty hot place. The winter season from November to March doesn't get much cooler than 68 degrees, so keep that in mind. Number six, Glendale, Arizona. Not too far from Buckeye and Surprise, Arizona, you have Glendale, Arizona, which is home to State Farm Stadium where the Arizona Cardinals play. Glendale has some crime and not the best schools. Mostly their crime though is property crime. So lock your stuff up and maybe get a security system. Their property crime here is 50% above the national average, but the violent crime is actually 12% lower. So you're safe, your stuff isn't. Sort of like divorcing a sane woman with a really good lawyer. Glendale has a livability score of 70, a population of about 240,000. Now, the median home price here is only $163,000. If you want to fix her upper, it's going to be around $100,000. That's it. It's pretty cheap to live here as far as housing goes, pretty much as far as everything goes. A nice home is going to run about $150,000 and up. Their schools also did get an F along with their crime. Glendale likes to bill itself as the antique capital of the world. So if you're into antiquing, this may be a great place to move to. You could antique all week long, seven days a week of antiquing. That's incredible. Number five, Maricopa. Maricopa is a small city about 45 minutes south of downtown Phoenix, about five minutes if you own a jet. There isn't a lot to this town after the casino that happens to be there. Looks like a decent one. I'd kind of seen it from the outside. I've never been actually to it. Uh, I was stuck on a train. The Amtrak goes through us. Stuck on a train. There was something wrong with the train. We had to sit there for like three hours and we got to go out and wander around a little bit because they told us it would be two hours before we got moving again. So I did. Actually, it was against their... Uh, advice, but I got back on time. Anyway, no big deal. The stats are decent here other than schools. The north end of the city borders the Gila River Indian Reservation, and they have a livability score of about 79. They only have 45,000 residents, and the median home value is $155,000. Not a lot of money, but this is the middle of the desert. Like I said, after the casino, there's not much to this place except cheap land and cheap houses. A nice home here is going to run you about $200,000, and a fixer-upper that's going to need a little work, you're looking at about $135,000. That's not bad. Like I said, the schools aren't great. Area Vibe actually gives them a F, and it, the place is located in the Gila River Valley. Number four, Snowflake, Arizona. Snowflake is a small town between the Hopi Reservation and Fort Apache Reservation, about three hours northeast of Phoenix by car and a fraction of a second if you own the Millennium Falcon. Really, I mean, it made the Kessel run in record time. It's fast. Anyway, this is also the hometown of Travis Walton. If you don't know who he is, he claims he was abducted by aliens just outside of town and D.B. Sweeney played him in the movie about his story called Fire in the Sky. It's actually a good movie. I don't know if it's true or not, but it was a decent movie. The livability score here is 71. They've only got a population of about 6,000 people, so it's not that crowded. The median home value here is $135,000. Now, if you want a fixer upper, you're looking at about 145,000. Nice homes start off around 240,000. Now, how'd they get a name like Snowflake? It was actually the name of two of the Mormon pioneers that colonized this area. I don't know how to pronounce his name, but it's like Ernest E R A S T U S Snow and William Jordan Flake. Combine snow and flake together, that's what you have. You'll often find this place on 
unusual name lists like things I do. But yeah, Snowflake, Arizona, not a bad place to live. Number three, El Mirage. El Mirage is another suburb of Phoenix, right next to Surprise. El Mirage is near Luke Air Force Base, which is the largest fighter pilot training base that NATO has to offer. I mean, all the countries, not just the United States. A good thing about El Mirage is the houses are affordable. You don't have to go broke trying to get a nice home. The jobs are also decent. There seems to be a good selection of full-time and part-time jobs. That's at least pre-pandemic days. If you can get past three months of triple-digit heat, it's a great place to own a home, especially for the retirement crowd. The livability score here is 71 with schools, the only thing taking the hit. There's about 34,000 residents in El Mirage, and the median home value is $125,000. A fixer-upper, you can get as low as $70,000. It's going to need some work, but you can get in for $70,000. The nicer homes start a little over $210,000. It is also home to the historic Aguafia River Bridge that was built in 1895. It's kind of a neat bridge. Number two, Florence, Arizona. Florence is a prison town. Really, they have a few good-sized prisons dotted around the outside of town. In 1870, Fred Adams founded a farming community two miles west of the original Florence town site. Farming town had stores, homes, post office, a flour mill, water tanks, and it was named Adamsville. In the 1900s, the Gila River overflowed its banks and pretty much destroyed the town. All the residents moved up to where present-day Florence is now. The area where Adamsville was is now a ghost town is currently within the boundaries of Florence. This isn't a bad desert town to buy a home. They have plenty of options. And it's a good town, like I said. The livability score here is 73. The population is 26,000. And the median home value is $112,000. That's low. A fixer-upper is probably going to really run you about 115,000. But the nicer homes start off around $220,000. It's not bad. Especially the place that has jobs. Their schools aren't the best, like a lot of Arizona. That's the only knock that Area Vibe really gives it. Good job numbers, things to do, homes are dirt cheap, cost of living is cheap. Crime is outstanding. It's just the schools. That's the only knock you'll get here. But yeah, they have multiple state, federal, county, and private prisons here. So if you're a prison guard, by profession, this might be a good place to look at. Before we get to number one, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit that little bell notification so you know when we upload. Be part of the community, leave comments, give the video a big thumbs up if you liked it. All right, on to number one. And number one, Kingman, Arizona. I'm not a fan of Kingman, Arizona. Actually, every time I've been there, my need to leave gets shorter and shorter. The first time I was there in the 1990s, I stayed three days. In 2001, I stayed one day, and in 2008, I dropped my friend off at her family's house never got out of the car, and drove the 37 minutes back to Laughlin, Nevada. The whole drive back to Laughlin, I was thinking, I wish I owned the Millennium Falcon. But Kingman isn't that bad to most people, and it fits our criteria to be in the number one spot on this list. The livability score here is 73, which, for as cheap as it is, that's a good number. They have about 30,000 residents, and the median home value is about $115,000. A fixer-upper, realistically, is going to cost you about $120,000, and the nicer homes start off around $180,000. Under $200,000 for a decent home is a good plan for anyone. I mean, they have some really, really nice ones, and those are only going to get you up to like $260,000. And Kingman, Arizona is ranked number one in the best places to buy a house for under $200,000 in Arizona. All right, everyone, that is our list. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. If any of you guys live in one of these places, we'd love to hear about it in the comment section below. I mean, that just helps the learning process here. I'm telling you about these places and I'm skimming them. If anyone else ever has any knowledge about any of the places I'm talking about, please feel free to give us the details in the comment section below. All right, everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other. Thank you.